You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Friday the 21st of September. Illegal exposes himself in front of judge. 13-year-old Afghani found wandering along motorway. Internet trolls desecrate memory of murdered WPCs. Report from the belly of the beast with Nick Griffin, MEP, the Belgian riots and much more. 50 innocent wounded in Pakistani riots and more to come in France. 50 rebels die in Syria at their tanks petrol filling station bombed by government troops. Thought for the day, am I upset or just offended? And finally, a dog shoots his owner. UK News. A former asylum seeker who was given leave to remain brutally raped a 17-year-old girl in Nottingham several days ago. At the hearing on Wednesday, Sudan-born Mowawi Ibrahim Karam, 28, exposed his genitals to the judge, shouting, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. He then shouted to the judge, please sentence me today, after officers struggled to make him decent. He was sentenced to ten years in prison on Thursday. After he raped the girl, he then stole her mobile phone. A World Date reporter commented he is obviously trying to get a hefty jail sentence to remain in this country. He should be chemically castrated and sent back to where he came from, perhaps the Sudan. A 13-year-old boy from Afghanistan has been picked up walking along the motorway. The boy was found by police walking up the M1 motorway near Junction 16. He had apparently hidden under a lorry from France to get into Britain and had no belongings. He apparently claimed that he had to escape the troubles in war-torn Afghanistan. Border chief officials say they have given up tracking down 80,000 illegals that they know of in Britain who have been missed. World Date comments, loads of rubbish. This boy should be deported before he joins up with his family, who are probably over here as well. We should make examples of this sort of immigration by stealth, so perhaps the rest of the illegals will think twice before attempting these journeys. Internet trolls desecrate the memory of murdered WPCs. There is an online web of hate towards the two policewomen, Fiona Bone and Nicola Hughes, by despicable beings who are nicknamed trolls. This gives a bad name to the trolls of the fairy books. They are also exhorting the killer, Dale Cregan, naming him as Sir Dale and a hero. These trolls operate through Facebook, which seems to be the height of their communications with the outside world of reality, and have been described by Julie Reed, a counsellor in Gorton, Manchester, as absolutely appalling. A World Date reporter comments, This is sadly revealing the lack of decency on a certain section of our society today. I put this with those YouTube ghouls who encouraged a suicidal man to jump off a 50-foot building, filmed it, and put it on YouTube. It is the mob mentality, up there with protesting Muslims and the black gangbangers. They are the same depraved and ignorant seed. Are we going the same way as the Romans, with their enemies within and their games to keep the poor at bay? Now I hand you over to Nick Griffin, MEP, for his report from the Belly of the Beast, which deals today with the Belgian riots and much more. Over to you, Nick. I'm back in Brussels this week and nothing has changed. The latest decisive world-saving bailout bounce lasted the usual five or six days before it turned out to be another unworkable piece of spin. The Spaniards refused to throw themselves naked in front of the austerity bull as demanded by the Germans and the Germans refused to pay the bill for a nice new red cloak and a sword for the Spaniards unless and until they do. So the currency crisis bull, which in stock market terms is of course a bear with a very sore head, will just keep on rampaging around, doing even more damage to the real economy with every day that passes. The parliamentary chamber is still quietly collapsing, with a permanent guard stationed nearby the entrance in case any MEP is foolish enough to risk a health and safety incident by climbing over the very posh red rope barrier to go and inspect the problem. And the liberal left crackpots are still sitting in environmental committee meetings, fretting over the possibility of carbon dioxide drowning polar bears. Also unchanged is the way in which the controlled media in Britain are refusing to tell you about the latest trouble in Europe as the great multi experiment spins further down the plug hole of history. The latest trouble is in Belgium, where Antwerp in particular has been hit by serious Muslim riots. It should be newsworthy because there's a new twist to this wave of trouble. 
While previous Islamist insurgencies in Belgium have overwhelmingly involved just youths, as they're described in Newspeak, this time the whole lot are out on the streets. Men, women and children are all up in arms, with shocking TV footage here, showing little girls of five or six screaming Allah Akbar and waving flags from house windows in support of the mob outside. The causus belli this time is the film on Muhammad, inspired, produced, circulated and publicised by a devil's alliance of Christian fundamentalist crackpots, Zionist zealots, corporate warmongers and an Egyptian crook who's obviously been paid a lot of money by someone to toss his lighted match into the powder keg world that looks ever more like August 1914. The provocation has, of course, been welcomed with open blood-stained arms by the conspirators' ugly Muslim fundamentalist mirror images. As I said last week, they're all equally vile and we need to keep as far away as possible from their plans for Armageddon. That's why we will not, under any circumstances, be in any way promoting the film. As you know, we have very serious concerns over the creeping Islamization of our country, but that's not a good reason for wantonly insulting and angering hundreds of millions of innocent Muslims in their own. If the great, wicked, multicultural utopia, promoted for various reasons by Marxists, liberals, capitalists and Zionists, is not to end in blood and fire and human suffering on a scale unprecedented in history, then one day, true statesmen and real humanitarians of all races, creeds and colours will have to call a truce and negotiate a peace settlement. The only peace that is possible is, in very simple terms, for the West to leave the lands of Islam and for the Muslims to leave the lands of the West. Because, as the wise old saying has it, good fences make good neighbours. Until that's done, the injustices, brutalities and the actions of the men of blood, on both sides, for no side remains blameless in the sort of horror towards which we're being herded, will continue to inflict misery on the innocent and to be covered up by the BBC. Which brings us to the question of what we can do about such controlled media blackouts. Well, for a start, we can take heart from the fact that the once all-powerful newspapers are sinking towards irrelevance and bankruptcy. As Giuseppe De Santis chronicles regularly on the BNP website, their circulations are in a slow-motion crash. The Guardian, which recently had to sack a number of the journalists who so delighted in lying about nationalists for years, is now only just clinging on to a circulation above 200,000. If it wasn't for the hidden subsidy it receives from the long-suffering taxpayer for advertising for positions with socialist councils, it would already have gone bust. Even as it is, it would only take every listener to this broadcast to go out every day for the next month and cover the copies of The Guardian on their local newsstand with The Telegraph and The Independent, and the psychologically damaging floor of 200,000 would be broken. But it isn't enough just to do our bit to damage the controlled media. We also have to build our own. Here too, you can do your bit straight away by sending the link to this program to all your friends and asking them to have a listen and make up their own minds. Our website, of course, has long had a very significant reach in its own right. I have no doubt that it's our constant hammering at the issue of Muslim grooming gangs that was one of the things that finally forced the powers that be to take at least limited action on the problem, which is better than nothing, and at least a start. As for how we can continue to build our alter alternative media, I think that we need to work on ways to deal with the fact that at present it essentially involves one-way traffic. Basically, whether it's the written, spoken, or the videoed word, it's the likes of me talking to people like you. What would surely carry us much further forward would be initiatives to make the whole nationalist alternative media experience more interactive and more sociable. Of course, it's much easier to say than it is to find ways to do it, but we must try. A combination of music and no holds barred phone in talk shows could well work, but even a limited test run would require significant effort and resources. I'd be very interested though to see your comments and thoughts on this. I'm glad to say I won't be in Brussels next week as I've got a string of meetings and activities on back in Britain. I hope those will produce some interesting material for me to bring you next week. Until then, keep the faith, spread the word, and remember, freedom is never free. Many thanks, Nick, as ever, a thought-provoking input. World news. Big trouble is flaring up in Pakistan over the innocence of Muslim film. The excerpts which have appeared over the internet have caused a riot in Pakistan in which 50 innocent people have been injured.
Thousands of Pakistanis formed a huge mob armed with bricks and sticks which attacked the police and security staff trying to protect the US, British and French embassies in Karachi. All in all, over 20 Muslim countries have been upset. France is also bracing itself for more protests over new cartoons showing Mohammed being pushed in a wheelchair by a rabbi. It will close 20 embassies worldwide and has warned French people to take care. At least 50 rebels have died in airstrikes by the Assad government. President Assad's forces are defending the country from so-called freedom and democracy fighters, but who are in fact Islamic fundamentalists encouraged and armed from outside the country. The strike by the Syrian Air Force hit a petroleum station which was being used by the rebels to fuel their transporters. The attack was to back up their troops on the ground that were under heavy attack. Thought for the day. Am I upset? <laughs> I'm reading a letter sent to a national paper which I think encapsulates the senseless violence around us in the world today. It is titled Easily Offended. And here we go. I quote. Braving the Pembrokeshire drizzle, I joined my family and a few neighbours in the garden the other afternoon, where we lashed ourselves into a mass-induced hysterical frenzy before setting fire to a homemade American flag. Nobody was quite sure why we'd become so spontaneously enraged, but apparently someone, somewhere, is supposed to have said something or other which called for an immediate outpouring of wild-eyed, spittle-fleck ranting and mindless violence. We certainly didn't need to be asked twice, even though Christina and Roger from number 22 had only called round to give us some of their windfall Bramley apples. The downside of our little protest get-together was when my wife, enthusiastically stamping on the still blazing remnants of the petrol-soaked stars and stripes, ignited her fluffy slippers and suffered a singed bunion. Nevertheless, we look forward to soon being offended again, so we can have a tenuous excuse to behave appallingly and give vent to our blind fury. It's certainly easier than expressing an opinion in a calm and dignified manner. End of letter. Now, I think this is hilarious, and it says a lot for the British sense of humour. Now, I am offended by certain things. Namely, people of a certain religion being offended most of the time, and usually in countries they migrate to. I am offended by people who put things on Facebook they would not have the guts to say in public or to the people concerned. I am offended by the plight of young white men in our society in the UK whose suicide rate goes up when they reach 30 because of lack of parental discipline, status within their own country and lack of jobs and future. I am offended by a government who deems it preferable to put huge amounts of money into the propaganda of a multicultural society, a misnomer in itself, both by TV and media, and who are busy putting ethnic faces on practically everything, formerly English, even stooping to infiltrate a new program on the British being shown. The usual offending people, including Russell Brand, telling us that Britain was formed by mongrels. At this stage, I would have been pleasantly offended if a black one-legged lesbian female was shown fighting off the Romans, but that didn't happen. But I was still offended and I turned it off. I'm offended by the writers of history who regularly put on TV and books details of Hitler's less than shining example of dictatorship and the inevitable six million deaths, whilst forgetting the 16 million Russians, Jews and Gypsies killed by Stalin and the 15 million Chinese killed in cold blood by the Japanese campaigns between 1937 and 1945, which some Chinese historians place at nearer 50 million. The Japanese also experimented on thousands of Chinese civilians and foreign prisoners in Unit 731. Now, I'm offended by the fact that whilst the Germans, and even we, grovel around at the drop of a single syllable, the Japanese firmly remain silent, giving rise to the old proverb, never apologise, your friends do not need it, and your enemies will never believe it. Also, of course, history is written by the victors. But I'm still offended. I'm offended by immigrants. Not all, but most. I'm offended by the Muslim religion taking hold in my country. I find that very offensive indeed. In fact, I shall have a one-woman demonstration against everything that offends me, and you can bet I'll be dragged off to jail deeply offended. I am also offended by the backside of Lady Gaga, and must concur with the cancellation of her tour in Indonesia, which was stopped after Islamic offendees protested as the show contains a giant inflatable vagina. 
Well, if we have a religion that does not allow a woman's face to be seen, that would fit, wouldn't it? I'm offended by people who are anti-American. They aren't perfect, but then there was only one perfect person who came to this world, and I'm not talking Mohammed here, and we would not want to meet his fate. But in reality, by the time the European Union has finished establishing, or allowing to be established, a caliphate in Europe, the only people we could rely on would be the Americans, or if we do not offend them too deeply, the Russians, maybe. I'm deeply offended at the sight of large black African families, and I mean large, wheeling great trolleys of food out of our local supermarket. Likewise, Pakistan and Saudi all deeply offend me. Their religion, their lack of manners, their sodding immigrants, their protests, their general everything offends me to the core. India offends me, a greedy and lazy people. So am I easily offended? Hell yes. I'm offended by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who seems to think he is a member of the wrong religion or in the wrong country. I'm offended by our police who kettle our own white people, whether in football stadiums or demonstrations, whilst happily chatting when Muslim offendees pour in their hordes through our towns. I'm offended by our prison system which allows foreign prisoners their rights whilst denying white prisoners theirs. I'm offended by our education system which seems solely for the benefit of immigrant children who should not be here. In short, I'm an easily offended person. But who really cares? Offended people who form large mobs are the ones who get noticed. Single offendees do not. Which is why we need the British National Party, so all us easily offended people can gather together and get really, really offended. And finally, at last, a dog has shot his owner. The Frenchman was taking part in a deer hunt with three blue Gascony basset hounds in Dodoyne, southwestern France, on Sunday when the accident occurred. René, 55, had taken his new shotgun and the youngest basset hound had stayed with him whilst the two other were chasing deer. Obviously the dog didn't take too kindly to his friends of the animal kingdom being killed, so when René lifted his gun to take aim, the pooch jumped up, put its paw on the trigger, blowing René's hand to pieces. Since the amputation, Rennie said, I should have put the damn safety catch on. It wasn't the dog's fault. He is adorable, or rather adorable. <laughs> Hmm. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozar, and I and the team at World at Eight and Radio Britain wish you all a very happy and a very safe weekend. Try not to get too offended. <laughs>